In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. Off a day, everyone, and welcome to another edition of In Full Zoom. I'm Nestor Lacanto, and I'm proud to welcome as our next guest for this week's uh, show. She is the chairperson of the uh, commission, U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. She's Norma Cantu. Thanks for joining us, Norma. Thank you, Nestor. Uh, buenas and half a day to you. Very well said. Uh, before we get into uh, what the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights is and what you're doing here in Guam, I wanted to first uh, talk a little bit about you and uh, your extensive background in, in public service. Tell us a little bit more about Norma Cantu. Well, I'm Professor Norma Cantu. I, uh, I teach uh, at the University of Texas at Austin. I grew up in South Texas and um, attended a Hispanic serving institution. Uh, when I was 18, I took the LSAT. So this is, this is, a, this is a person, I'm a person that, that uh, knew from fourth grade that I wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, I, would, I would walk from, from elementary school, go past the courthouse, and step inside because they had air conditioning and chilled refrigerated water in the water fountain. Uh, so so uh, coming from deep south Texas where it's super hot, uh, I knew when I would grow up I would become an attorney. Um, and, and I was the first person to apply from, from my Hispanic Serving Institution, Pan American University. And I applied uh, to, to a number of schools, but I was the first person from my, school, my college to apply to Harvard Law School. And at the age of 19, I was accepted uh, uh, to, to attend Harvard Law School. And I graduated when I was 22 years old. Um, the, uh, the first job I had was, was working at the Texas Attorney General's office, representing and investigating complaints um, brought by the elderly, uh, who had been abused or neglected in long-term care facilities. So my workday started at 11.30 at night and we paid night visits and found that their pain medications were locked up, that the nurses uh, were understaffed, that the doctors would, would spend an hour and sign off on meds for over a hundred people in one hour. Obviously they couldn't have met with all of them and treated all of them in one hour. So the abuses were huge. And this was back in 1973 that um, this, these types of lawsuits were being brought to reform and to take better care of the senior citizens that we love and respect. Um, my second job was with the Mexican American Legal Defense Fund and I worked with children. So I went to the other, the other side of the spectrum in terms of age and I, I uh, brought lawsuits on, on behalf of children who needed support to learn the English language. Um, uh, when I was a student, the way to teach English was to spank kids who said Spanish words or to take away their lunch money or to send them home to their parents and tell the parents spank those kids. They cannot, they cannot speak Spanish at school. It's not allowed. And the teachers kept referring to the fact that we had a state law in Texas that, that it was illegal for a, teach, a teacher to use any Spanish words in conducting their classes. So they could not even translate for the kids to help them understand what the lessons were. And so in, in the 1980s, I was responsible for bringing lawsuits on behalf of English language learners. And uh, we, I was part of a statewide case called United States versus Texas that resulted in a statewide order that programs needed to be developed to help the kids learn and to help them catch up for the lessons missed while they were learning English. Yeah. Uh, another suit that you may have heard about is the suit involving undocumented school children and they're, uh, they're, they're not being punished for their parents having decided to move into the United States. Uh, the state had said that these children themselves were lawbreakers and the children should be punished and not allowed to attend public schools but should be charged out of state tuition. And that case went up to the US Supreme Court. It's called Plyler versus Texas. Plyler is the name of the school superintendent and he lived in Tyler, Texas. So Plyler from Tyler uh, um, accepted the loss very graciously and immediately became, began educating the children. Um, the, the children today are called dreamers. They, they are applying to colleges. They've completed their, their high school coursework um, and, and, and their issues are pending before Congress. 
in terms of, of, of colleges. Uh, the other litigation that I worked on dealt with women's issues. Um, my clients wanted uh, the, uh, the city uh, transportation companies to hire women as bus drivers. And there was a big pool of women to hire because women drove the school buses. Uh, and they had never hired a, a, a woman of color, a Latina, to be a, a school bus driver, a, a bus driver for the regular city. And, uh, and I am proud to say that, that one day I was at uh, near the courthouse and my big Jeep got pushed over a little bit, not dented or anything, but I, it, it, clearly the bus got too close. And at the next intersection, I got out of the car, walked up and tapped on the window and, and the bus driver opens the door and it's a Latina that's driving the bus. And instead of yelling and screaming, I, I realized she drives just like all the other bus drivers. I almost wanted to hug her and send congratulate her. For, she was probably the first woman. Uh, uh, and those buses are big and the lanes are narrow, but, but uh, I acted inappropriately. I almost hugged her. Um, In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. So, so the, the, the kind of cases uh, got me some national attention because with my co-counsel, Al Kaufman, we uh, sued the state of Texas for equal school funding uh, so that, that um, the system of finance in Texas was it relied heavily on property taxes and, and where people who were minority lived in low valued uh, properties, they were the best homes they could find for their kids, but the, the, with the low levels of property uh, resources they could raise, the schools could not afford and here's where, here's where my life arc uh, goes, goes back into a full circle. The same schools I attended became examples of the challenges that kids uh, missed. No air conditioning. When it rained outside, it rained inside. Teachers would quit. Uh, as soon as they got even a little more pay, even $10 more pay, they would quit and go work somewhere else because the facilities were, were, were not safe for them or their kids and, and students. Uh, and the other examples were uh, the, the children were not prepared for, for college or career. Um, the property wealthy schools in, in some of the um, bigger, bigger school districts offered uh, college preparation like uh, advanced placement classes. They offered all 15 classes in different types of AP and our property poor districts would offer like one class. Yeah. Uh, and so so the, 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 the disparities were so great, uh, 20 times more money in the property wealthy districts that the, the court, the Texas Supreme Court ruled to change the entire yeah. state system of funding. That, that's, a, that's quite a breadth of experience. Thank you for, for sharing that, Norma. Uh, wanted to get to your, um, chair pers- your chairmanship of the uh, U.S. Commission on, on Civil Rights. Uh, how did that come around? Uh, what is the mission of the commission? And also, uh, what brings you to Guam? So, so very, very succinctly, when I was uh, learning about lawsuits, I also learned that the general public can have an impact on policy and fairness by being more involved. So I would nominate people to serve on city boards, on county commissions, and even to serve on agencies as White House appointees and to serve on national commissions. And so one year as I was, as I was nominating people, a, a good friend of mine said, I'm not going to apply to work in Washington unless you do it too. I mean, I said, what are we, eighth graders? And, but she was right. So I submitted an application and I was selected by the White House to be appointed to run the Office for Civil Rights at the U.S. Department of Education. And that required Senate confirmation. And I did my, I did my work. I was able to go and visit with all of the senators that were on the, on the confirmation committee. The, and, and I was unanimously approved. I stayed eight years in that office. I hold the, the title of the longest surviving civil rights director uh, for, for U.S. Department of Education. Um, 
and, and ever since then, I've been able to talk to people about policy, serve on boards and commissions. One of my loves is the Foundation for Child Development that look at preschool children. And they issue a wonderful uh, national report on the condition of, of age zero to three in uh, children in, in the US. Uh, it, this, this past year, year, two years ago in 2020, I was invited to be on the tr transition team. Uh, and so I was to look at civil rights issues as well as education issues. And again, I was nominating folk and suggesting people and they called me and, and said, we need you for a vacancy on the US Commission on Civil Rights. So, so while I was not job hunting, it is a dream job. And I'm very, very honored to, to, that, that I was elected unanimously to be the chair of the US Commission on Civil Rights. We have very talented individuals who have been, half of them have been appointed by presidents and half of them have been appointed by Congress. And the commission, let me tell you about that. The, the, the US Commission on Civil Rights was, was created by, by former General Eisenhower. Uh, when he was general and commander of, of, of so many military folk, and, and in Guam, military is so key, it's so important. Uh, pre, uh, general Eisenhower tried and very, very hard to integrate the, the, the services, the military services. He appointed the first woman cabinet member Oveta Culp Hobby, and she was the, uh, I believe, in charge of health and, and human services. And so he created a commission on civil rights that was to be bipartisan with Republican and, and Democrat that, that, that would collect information, hold public hearings, let the, the community speak about pressing civil rights issues, particularly affecting African Americans and women, and the, the data and the reports that were issued were used to help pass the Civil Rights Acts of 1964. So the commission has a long heroic history of speaking truth to power and also opening doors for the communities to come forward and share their stories. And that Several brings us to, ago, mm -hmm. yeah, sorry, go ahead, I'm sorry. Several months ago, we had a, a public briefing in Puerto Rico, and the, and and the, when one of the the community members came forward, she talked about how the power went out after Hurricane Maria hit the island in 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 2017. She said her community was the poorest of the poor, and it took weeks for the lights to start to come up, and and she looked around at night to see which which of her neighbors had light. Months went by and she saw more power be switches being turned on. Her poorest neighborhood that was predominantly uh, of, of, of descent from slaves, descendants of slaves, was the last one to have their power. It was 11 months without electricity. And then she cried. Her testimony to me was a powerful statement about there are people out there whose voices need to be heard. And so our commission has, has uh, 50 states have their own advisory commissions, plus the District of Columbia. And then this past year, Congress gave us funding to have commissions for, for the territories. Yes. So and that brings Guam us to Guam. First, Guam was the first commission to have an in-person meeting. They held it today, our inaugural meeting. And they, I am so, so, so happy that, that the, the, this, this new path for Guam is a path that, that will give them an opportunity to have their stories listened to. When, when they hold their briefings and they, 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 they collect information and they listen to the community, they will write it up and, and make it public and share it. And, and they, will, they can recommend whether we want to send it to Congress so Congress can hear recommendations or they may want it heard by the White House or they may want it folded into a larger report. There are many avenues that can come from this data. I mean, maybe new civil rights laws will come out of something that, that started here today. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. 
what are you, what do you see as the biggest challenges to civil rights uh, since uh, 1964? Um, how much progress has been made? Um, it, each community, each type of community that is covered by the civil rights laws will give you a different answer. I mean, when I was in, uh, working uh, in, in, uh, as the head of the Office for Civil Rights and Education, I would tell African Americans, if you can, if you can help me prioritize, what, what do you think? So I would not choose the priorities for the communities. We, we have a federal law called uh, FACA, and it talks about communities having fair access to, to government. And so we, we, by federal law, we have to give notice of any, any meetings where a decision is going to be made, but we also have to be fair and even-handed in, in hearing out, um, look, for example, I care about housing. Right now, after this pandemic, we have serious housing needs and housing is not affordable to a lot of folk, but especially to single parents, to young people, to people who, who have been unemployed for a while. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tight, tight situation everywhere. And as, and, and as I understand it from reading and listening to the radio, it's a, it's, it's a problem in Guam. It's a problem. And so, so with a housing issue, it would be really unfair if, I would, if, 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 if anyone in our commission would say, I'm just going to listen to the landlords. And, and I'm going to have landlords come forward and, and tell us what they want to see change as far as, as civil rights laws. We, we, are, we, have, we, are, we have constraints that, that, that belong there. Those guardrails are necessary to be sure that they, we are fair and that any report that we issue out or any recommendation that we make is informed by both sides. And I think that's one of the things that has changed because before that happened, do you know what affirmative action used to mean? Affirmative action used to mean, oh, we have to post the job and tell people there's a job opening. I mean, that's what it was like in 1964, that, that if, if the U.S. mail was going to hire someone or if a corporation was going to hire someone, affirmative action meant that. And, and, and words that are attached to civil rights have had meanings changed. Courts have interpreted them in ways that, that that we now understand with a lot more clarity what, what is allowed and what is not allowed. And so that's, that's different. But, the, but the, the, the connecting back to each community and, and respecting that each community is different, we would not do for people with disabilities and uh, the same thing that we would do for Title IX sports. You know, totally yeah. completely issue, different issues. So, so, so we, would, we would have to respect that and, 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 and make sense, uh, make common sense decisions and recommendations. As, you, as, you, as you've noted, um, the civil rights is there's a wide spectrum of civil rights, but I think the average person when they hear civil rights um, will immediately think about race relations. Um, can you speak to that and, uh, and how much uh, uh, progress has been made or are we regressing? Um, there seems to be an emergence in recent years of uh, the far right and their, um, for example, um, their uh, work uh, or their efforts against uh, immigration. Can you talk about that? Well, the, the, the commission has written several reports and I would ask people to go look on our website at, at www.usccr.com. That's usccr.com. We have, we, you can use the search, any search term and you'll find the kind of reports the most recent reports have been uh, uh, with regards to hate crimes against Asian American and Pacific Islanders. So within the last, I'd say, three to four years, we've collected a lot of data and, and we've, we've made recommendations um, um, with, with, with regards to how serious and how violent some folk have been against the, the, the people who by birth are connected to a community of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, and yet they're, they're being attacked in violent ways. Uh, we've issued reports on, on um, people who are descendants from Middle Eastern backgrounds, and they also have been having their temples and mosques um, um, defaced or, or attacked. Um, we, the, the, the issue that we re most recently handled dealt with racial disparities in maternal health care. So if you think about in 1964, we probably had a really high fatality rate especially among women of color, um, sometimes the mom would die, sometimes the, uh, it was completely avoidable that the child died but because there wasn't ac equal access to high quality healthcare. Unfortunately, it, in the year 2022, it's still a problem. And it's a problem that in a bipartisan way, both, both 
uh, U.S. Surgeon Generals, the one appointed by a Republican president, the one appointed by a Democrat president, think that it's too high, that we have, lo we have, we have lost too many um, lives. And, and then we also wrote about the mental health consequences that we need to bridge moms. And I know there was a tragedy that happened in Guam this week where, where uh, we're very concerned. We don't know all the facts about it, but women do go into depression. Women do suffer um, from lack of uh, adequate mental health care. And the whole family suffers when there is a, a loss uh, related to a, a new birth. Yeah, I think you're referring to an incident at uh, Two Lovers Point and that, of course, the details are still uh, pending on that. We don't know all that. the details, but it, it is a tragedy if even one, if even one family ex experiences uh, a lack of access to health care. And so, so we, those are the kind of issues that, that are not new ones. Um, those are issues that we're trying to do better, that we're trying to be sure that we have an infrastructure so that, that resources are available. Um, the the post-pandemic issues are, are, are related to, to affordable homes, house, uh, housing is, I mean, uh, jobs. <laughs> I mean, pe people, they're related, whether, whether you are paid well enough that you can afford uh, a safe place to, to raise your family. Um, Healthcare. Um, when you asked about immigration, um, we've made we've made some um, some progress. I mean, it was it wasn't that long ago that we were seeing um, news photos of children in what looked like cages, cyclone cyclone fences being used to create um, um, what looked like cells for for unes unescorted minors whose whose parents could not keep them safe in their own country and had found someone to bring them here to the United States. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. The, what we have learned is, is that that was the wrong idea. The wrong idea of putting them in, in, in cages is wrong, but it's, it's also wrong to ignore the fact that in other countries besides the US, there are reasons that parents don't believe their children should stay in a dangerous place. And, and that needs to be addressed um, yeah. because it, 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 it brings um, children who are traumatized you know, an unescorted, and it brings children here who, who are going to, should be reunited with their family. We, we, we believe in keeping families together. So those are the new types of civil rights issues. There's not been a recent committee report uh, from our U.S. Commission on Civil Rights on, on Immigration, but if, if you search on our website, you will find that, that that's an, a topic that's been addressed in the past. All right. Now we only so, to, to, so to summarize what our commission does is it doesn't make new law. And it doesn't encourage people to break existing laws. But what we try to do is offer the, the, the clearest summary of the, the, the factual conditions and the policy questions in order to improve the laws and the law enforcement that we have now. Yeah. So please don't write a letter asking me to investigate something and enforce something because I won't be able to, 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 to make a promise to do that. But what I can commit to you is that our mission is to involve people in solving really long-standing pernicious civil rights problems. All right, we've only got a couple of minutes left and I wanted to leave this uh, with you. Uh, what, what is your expectation and, and what is your hope for the uh, Guam Advisory Com Committee? Oh, my expectations have already been exceeded because <laughs> through our mission that was set back in 1957, we are, we are to act in a bipartisan manner. And this is a, a fairly developed, we had a lot of applications. It was pretty competitive, but, the, but, but we did follow the instructions that, that Congress gave us. We have a bipartisan committee. We have high energy, enthusiastic members of the committee. The chair is Vanessa Williams. The, the folk talked today at length about being sure they followed the laws about giving notice so that the public would be aware and kept informed about what we're doing and about being fair and, and not favoring one, one, one type of, 
of, of a point of view over another, but letting all the voices be heard. You've got, you are so lucky in Guam that, that um, finally Congress uh, uh, showed the initiative and gave additional funding to our, our agency so we could add the territories. Uh, but we also had to be authorized to do it. We can't, as our, uh, we can't promote ourselves and say, okay, we're 51 different advisors. And so let's add five more. We, we needed Congress to tell us that we were authorized to do that. And so I thank our members of Congress and I thank our, our, our local people in Guam and I'm very excited about it. The, futures, the future is um, going to be one week where, where Guam is at the table, as they say in the Hamilton musical, they're in the room where it happens. All right, Norma Cantinueva is the chairperson of the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. Pleasure to have you, ma'am. Thanks for sharing your time. Thank you, Nestor, gracias. All right, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you again next week on In Full Zoom. Thank you. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E.